<clears throat> I'd like to share a scripture with you from the book of 1 John, chapter 2, verses 9 to 11. And this is taken from the Amplified Bible. The one who says he is in the light and yet habitually hates or works against his brother is in darkness. The one who says, I love you. I made Jesus the Lord and Savior of my life. I'm a Christian. The one who says he is in the light, yet habitually works against his brother, is not in the light. He's in darkness. He's blind. He doesn't love you. There's no love in him. He's not a Christian. There's no Christ in him. He didn't make Jesus the Lord and Savior of his life. He has another Lord. The one who loves and unselfishly seeks the best for his brother, and really that is what love is, wanting what's good for other people, goodwill, wanting, desiring what's best for someone. That person lives in the light, and in him, and this person in the light, there is no occasion for stumbling or offense. And I'm going to be focusing on that word, stumbling. The person who wants what's best for you, the person who's actually in light, the person who actually submits to his conscience or submits to a higher power is not going to do things or say things that cause you to stumble. And I'm going to get into that. But the one who habitually, that's why I like to amplify that word habitually, it's a habit. It's a practice. Like I said last night, it's a ritual. The one who habitually works against his brother is in spiritual darkness, is walking in the darkness, does not know where he is going because the darkness has blinded his eyes. And we're not talking about these things. Talking about his inner eyes. He's blind. Stumbling. I wrote these down. I'll just start here. I think one major way the wicked... And, and let me preface this. When I say wicked, I'm thinking of men and women who profess to be mom, profess to be your dad, profess to be your husband, profess to be your pastor, your shepherd, profess to be your friend, profess to be light, and yet work against you, consciously work against you, consciously work to cause you to stumble. These are wicked people.
I think what makes wickedness wickedness is the pretense, the pretend to love when you actually hate, to speak for God when you're not speaking for God. To say, I am your father, when uh, just because you provided a little sperm one night, don't make you the father. Don't make you daddy. To say, I'm your husband, and then turn around and psychologically, if not physically, beat your wife. You ain't no husband. You're a piece of filth. You're wicked. Wicked hides behind a pretense like the Pharisees in Christ's day of religion, Christian, church. And I wrote this. I think one major way, this might be the major way, Wicked people cause others to stumble is through moral confusion. Moral confusion. There may be no greater arsenal of tactics available to the wicked than the employment of words, gestures, and behaviors that directly attack the conscience of another human being attacking the conscience to confuse one's perception of what's right and wrong to lead one to question I'm talking about stumbling now what is stumbling to lead one to question, to wonder about his or her own inner reality, to question his or her truth, to question his or her own self-understanding, world understanding, or God understanding. And I believe Isaiah called out this confusion inducement in the fifth chapter of the book of Isaiah when he said, Woe unto them... I like the word woe, don't you? It's so weak. The Holy Spirit is pronouncing a formal curse on these people. He's cursing them. This is who he's cursing. This is who he's proclaiming doom to. <clears throat> Woe to them that call evil good. Woe to them that call good evil. Cursed are those that put darkness for light and light for darkness. Cursed be those that put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. We're talking about moral confusion. I believe this is stumbling. I believe this is the stumbling that the Apostle John talked about in 1 John. And nowhere is this stumbling, this moral confusion, more evident than among victims of narcissistic abuse. I'll read some more here that I wrote. Through gaslighting, through isolation, and through the golden child scapegoat double standard that exists in sick family systems, the victim is, the victim is shamed into believing. The victim is shamed into believing that he or she is evil. The victim is shamed into believing that they're the problem. They're the darkness. They're bitter. The 
Therefore, the victim stumbles through a moral minefield created by the malignant narc, believing that he or she is bad for harboring anger, resentment, even hatred toward their abuser. The victim is led to believe God will not forgive them if they don't forgive their abuser. The victim is led to believe they are responsible for the rage of their abuser. This is really evident in marriages where the wife is made to believe that somehow or other, if she would love her husband more, be a little sweeter, be a little more accommodating in the bedroom, that the abusive husband will somehow repent of his evil. The burden is placed on the wife. The moral burden to correct one's attitude is placed on the victim. That's occasion to stumble. This causes the victim to spiritually stumble. It causes the victim of abuse to spiritually lose their moral balance. It causes them once again to cut off any dependence they may have on their own inner life. They can't trust their own perceptions anymore. They can't trust their own feelings anymore. This will eventually cause the abuse victim's faith to eventually fail. To tell the victim of any kind of abuse that it is, it is up to you, the moral responsibility is up to you, to forgive that man or that woman is darkness. I don't care if he's the pastor of a 10,000 member mega church and author of 20 best selling books. For him to tell you it is. Hinge, it hinges upon you to forgive and love a wicked, evil, darkened, satanic soul. Well, I'll tell you what, that in my book, and I believe in the book, that pastor is in darkness himself. He claims to be light. But he's causing you, he's causing any victim of evil and wickedness and abuse to stumble. And it would be better. It would be better for that dumb pastor to have a millstone tied around his neck, his worthless neck, and thrown into the sea than to have ever been born. <laughs> 